back in the studio. Blake, I'm digging the hat, man. I'm it's Masters Week. The, yeah, we got, got the, the green. green memo. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you, uh, uh, you play a lot of golf? Um, I do play a lot. I, you know, I, I haven't improved in the okay. past two years while I've been playing, but I still like it. Uh, just get a pretty day and go out there. And, um, you know, our business and, and family – make it where nights and weekends are tough to get out and actually play. And so my my playing schedule usually is like a random Tuesday morning. I'll go walk nine holes and then get to the office by 9 a.m. Okay. Um, so. I, uh, I saw a funny uh, – it was a TikTok or Instagram reel or something. It was a guy who got invited to go – a little skit they were doing. A, little, a guy got invited to go play golf, and he's like, yeah, I don't know if I'm really into this. He walks up, chips the ball, and it, like, lands close to the hole, and he turns to his friends, and he's like – I'm going to dedicate my entire life to this. <laughs> and they're like, all my just money. Non, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's um, Dude, it is. It's like, it's such a love hate. I played last week and like the first two holes, I was like, you would have thought like it was my two year old playing. Like, what is going on? And then I would just hit one, I hit one ball as a, a five iron of all things out of a bunker, like out of the sand, which is like, I mean, my mindset was like, well, uh, maybe cares? I'll get out. Yeah. Ended up hitting like 200 yards, 10 foot from the hole on the green. I'm like, wow. I love this game. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just, which, again, like, that is, is such an anomaly. I've never hit a shot like that before in my life. I know a lot of people yeah. take golf pretty seriously. Uh, we went on a camping trip with some friends of ours, and um, they had mentioned uh, a new boyfriend of one of the friends of the wife, and uh, the husband was trying to kind of get to know him a little bit. It's like, oh, you play golf? Hey, cool. You know, he's a pretty open-minded guy. He's like, I don't, I've never played, but, you know, if you ever want to, you know, need a person to go with you. And the guy basically – was pretty bluntly like, no. <laughs> He's like, I take it pretty seriously. I'm yeah. not taking some noob with me to the, to the golf course. And he was like, dude, he was just like not – it wasn't even entertaining the oh idea my gosh, that's hilarious. of taking me. He was like, like well, okay, we're, all right. We're not, I guess we're not friends. I'm not going to learn to play golf with this guy. I guess we're not friends. Yeah, you well, know, it's funny. It's, there's, it can be, it's obviously a frustrating game because there's no such thing as perfect in it. And, and so it's a lot of like mental – exercise I guess while you're out there but you'll see people that um just blow up throw clubs just crazy oh, like yeah. so far. I'm like are you even having fun like why are we here um but also I, I and I think there's a, a the other side of that is like the mindset of that I try to approach is like I'm not great I'm out here to enjoy the beautiful weather get some exercise because we walk and, and whatever perfectly um, manicured ground yeah yeah just, it's just pretty yeah, it's, it's, it's fun awesome. to do but I think there is a an appropriate level of frustration relative to your skill level and a lot of people have that that frustration level is way too high for where where it should be based off their skill level based off their skill level. yeah, yeah. it's um it's i got a couple of buddies and we kind of joke about that when we see people or play with someone new who you know is is out of proportion like that mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like bro you're way too hard for how not good you are so anyways well anyways yeah master's <laughs> going on just watch the professionals but it's good to catch up kind of hear what's going yeah. on in your personal life dude so, so real quick master story i know we're we're talking about golf a lot here but it's a new golf um, podcast yeah new golf doing. Yeah, yeah yeah all the advice you want from us <laughs> on golf yeah um so my uh my mom's parents my granddad was a methodist preacher for 50 years and he um, took care of this couple, this couple that was even older than them until they ended up passing away, that uh, this couple had master's tickets. They had two of them every year. They had badges. And um, they, you know, the last 10 years of their life, that couple didn't go because they were, you know, health, health reasons and stuff. And so this is when I was little. So my parents went a couple years and my grandparents went. And the one rule was you can't sell them. Uh, and that's like a master's rule, but also like their internal rule because you could still like sell them. And this was are these tickets like lifelong? Yes. Passes? Yeah. yeah. If you, okay. They they had um, full weekend that so full weekend badges like lifetime. Wow. Yeah, it's okay. just crazy. And pe my parents said, and this again, this was twenty years ago. They got offered five thousand dollars a piece for the tickets twenty years ago. Like it's just like they're crazy. So tell them what they're worth now. Yeah. yeah. And so. Um, so that couple passed away, and um, they they didn't have any family, and so they willed everything to my grandparents, hmm. including those master's tickets. Oh, cool. My granddad, and I've, I've later, oh, so my granddad reached out to him, uh, to the master's, like, hey, just want to let you know this. We'll just put them in our name, whatever, and we'll, we'll roll forward. Doesn't happen. If the person dies, they go back they to the master's back. and reallocate it. Oh, wow. And so I always wondered, like, if he had not reached out to him, would we have two master's tickets for the full weekend in my family? Oh, man, bummer. But I recently, someone told me this year who grew up in Augusta, who, who used to work it as a high schooler, he was like one of the kids running They check there. IDs or something when you get They there. check obituaries. 
Oh, wow. How wild is that? But how long, how often? You may have gotten a couple of Masters in before they're like, oh, yeah, this couple's yeah. not with but us But I was, anymore. you know, not until, like, because I, I didn't start golfing until, like, a couple years ago, so I couldn't tell you single, you know, Tiger Woods and growing yeah. up, but oh, outside yeah, of I that. Couldn't. So oh. the, the draw to go just hasn't really been there until, like, the past couple of years. So I, they probably would have found them. Oh. Yeah, but what in finding, that? but it's cool because we've got, my mom has framed in her house um, badges every single year since the 40s from the masters wow like that's how long they had them and and so it's you've got a ticket this big picture of tickets from e- almost every year and so anyways that's where this hat came from so i've not been i know some people get mad when you wear master's gear and you haven't been whatever but um i'm mad yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my parents bought this when they went so well cool man uh uh i know um uh, a few episodes back we talked about you were in chicago um mm-hmm. and and doing the coaching thing um I know you only meet like once a quarter, but yeah. they do give you homework. Yeah. Uh, anything new or relevant with that? Um, yeah. You um, doing? Yeah. So going through that homework, um, one of the big things that we may have talked about on this podcast already was discovering and honing in on, on one's unique ability. So we went through an exercise of writing down all the business activities that we do in a week or in a month or, or ever and then categorizing them into different things of you're not good at, you shouldn't be doing all the way up to, uh, there's four quadrants, but the, the number one quadrant was unique ability. So categorizing all the things inside the, the list of stuff that you do that um, you're great at, that you should be doing, that gives you energy, that just fires you up, that um, okay, yeah, I remember your, touching yeah, on that your unique yeah. ability. Yeah. And so, and it was interesting, we categorized like how much time we spend in each quadrant, and it's only like 15% that I was spending in that unique ability zone. And so it's, it's got my mind thinking and trying to be intentional with scheduling out my week to make sure it, is, it revolves around those unique abilities. I imagine your schedule is probably the most streamlined <laughs> of any person I am currently <laughs> associated with in any degree. Um, just a personal tidbit. Like... <laughs> If I just got a play by play, how did, is your wife disorganized or is she on board Dude, or does she get like, like, can we just have like a moment <laughs> where we're not planning out the next 20 minutes of our life? Man, it's crazy because I'm not, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm not organized. Like all this, all this is not natural behavior for me. Sure, it's, it's not. I, mean, it's I totally true. agree. <laughs> Dude, it's, um, gosh, if, I mean, ask anyone know me growing up or like listen to, my, we both my parents and Rachel's parents were in town and, and over for dinner and they were our daughter Stella who's now she's got a lot of words and has so much energy and it's like it's it's like a top that's spinning that you like set it down it's just boom like gone like that's just how she just chasing after you and um Rachel's mom looked at my parents and was like was Blake like because Rachel was like an angel she's like the easiest they've said this like the easiest child like mm. super easy and they were like oh Blake was worse and like so I just ninety to nothing all the time, um, unorganized, just scattered. So, um, by no means am I close to like perfectly organized, but it's all forced, and that's why I have a coach. Like that—that's the whole reason for the coaching program that's is why you have a coach to yeah. put some structure around all of that activity and energy. Because if I didn't, I would probably end up spending all my time in that fourth quadrant, which is like the last place I should be. Um, so, have you been applying this, and <clears throat> and how has it been affecting? since your last meeting yeah so it, it really is is forced me to stay up more in in the high level in the sense of like team growth um investment growth like where are we headed on the investment piece and and trying to like big picture scale mm-hmm. um and so those activities look like again it's it's become a theme the past couple episodes but building relationships with people who work in those spaces so if we're going after you know, a hundred plus unit multifamily deals, what brokers work in that space, what lenders work in that space, building relationships with them. Um, what other investors work in that space who might be acquiring deals that they need a partner on or dispositioning some deals that I could buy and, and just putting myself in that world and surrounding myself with those people to where opportunities will come out of that. Mm -hmm. Um, where before I haven't, like if, if that, that is one of my goals. And so before I just haven't been structured or consistent about chasing those things or doing those things, but I've spent, I've been part of my, my fourth quadrant activities are like tenant management in our, you know, low income properties. And it's like, that is not the highest and best use of my time. I'm not good at it. I don't enjoy it. It's very outsourceable. And mm. so, like, just getting structure around those things. Stuff you may not even think about. Yeah. It's like, hey, okay, I could save myself an hour every mm-hmm. week 
Yeah. You know, or some stuff like I shouldn't be doing, like like it adds no, like no one should be doing it a part of my team or business because it doesn't add any value and it's just a waste of time and money. Like, mm-hmm. and so getting some of those stuff off our plate, which, you know, when you're, when I'm unscheduled and unplanned throughout the week, it, it's like super easy to kind of fall towards those higher number blocks. And it's just like that, that's not the highest and best use of my time. Yeah. So cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool to hear about uh, what could be if I were to, uh, Structure my life a little bit better. Uh, I think I thrive for the chaos. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I, let's talk, touch on that a little bit because so su- my success, how I view my own success is so relative. Um, my natural instinct is to measure my success against where I think it could be, mm-hmm. which I think may be a pretty common thing. And that's what the coaching um, program kind of indicated that a lot of people measure where you are to where you think you could be or should be. And a lot of times it's a negative view because you're like, I'm not there yet. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not there. I'm not there. And so they have something called the positive focus, which, um, and we've talked about, I've got the journal that I talk, you know, I write down at the end of every single day, what were three big wins today and three big wins I want to have tomorrow. Um, and so it's a lot about reviewing around what have we accomplished and measuring backwards and saying, you know, and not just living in the past and, you know, we're always setting goals to move forward, but also what have we done and where have we been? Where were, where was I two years ago based off where I'm at today? Appreciation of where you're at. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and so in doing that, um, it's, it's really changed my mindset more on the positive side of things sure. because it's, you know, I was down in the dumps like, man, I'm just not getting it. I'm just not working yeah. hard enough. I, you know? Yeah. And I'm on social media and this guy's got, you know, a thousand units and this guy's cash flow and a hundred thousand dollars a month. And I'm like, dang it, why am I not there? This guy started four years ago. I've, I've been doing this 10 years and I'm not there yeah. yet. Like it's super easy to get in that mindset of like, you know, comparing where I could be or even worst case to somebody else um, to where I'm at now. So if I look back and say, okay, this is where I've come from. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to hear people like, I, and that's the constant thing I've got to feed my, my, my own self, my own brain is like, okay, we've got to stay in the positive focus because people come to me and be like, man, I, I love what you're doing. You, it's it's super cool. You've got all these units and you're doing these things and you flip this. Like, wow, like that is success. Like in their mindset, like, yeah. wow. And to me, I'm like, we're, we're nowhere near. Kind of scratching the surface. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, to me, I mean, when I first met you, that's I, that was the impression that I had. I was like, wow, man, you're doing all these things. And I had no idea, you know, <laughs> uh, when I first met you in our first conversation, all the information that you would bring to the table. And I was like, dude, you're so successful, you know, and you're, you're a young guy and you seem to have all your ducks in a row. And, and yes, so speaking from experience, you know, seeing that outsider view, I'm like, dude, why even keep going? Like, you're, <laughs> you're done, you know what I mean? Like, you've done it. You, yeah. You've it, reached the threshold. Gosh, so. It's, so, it's so relative. So it's um, my mind's probably when we met, my mindset was like probably close to like failure. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I mean, not fail because – I think failure is like you're giving up, which like I was, I'm nowhere near that, and I wasn't then. But it, it was not recognizing the success that I've had and appreciating it sure. and thinking about it. But it's again just comparing what it could be and knowing that like I'm not at my potential, which I think internally is like the biggest fear. This is about to get real deep, but um, my biggest fear is like getting to the end of my life and realizing that I was nowhere near the potential that I could have been. Sure. Yeah. And that's not just for business. That's, but that's a reasonable for, fear, yeah. I mean, that's just for, for being a, a dad, a husband, a, you know. Just all things. Yeah, like, just did all I things. live my life the way it, it was intended to be lived? Yeah. Did I reach all the goals that, you know, I was hoping to reach or I should have reached? Yeah, because nobody wants to. It's almost like, you know, you don't want to have regret at the end of your yeah. life. You know what I mean? Man, I heard someone, I read this in a book, or I forget where I heard it, but it was um, what heaven and hell looks like and, and getting to hell looks like you're meeting the person you could have been. Ooh, yeah. When when you get to heaven, it's like looking in a mirror or you're meeting yeah. yourself. That's a pretty good analogy. And, yeah. I, man, that stuck with me. And that's just like. Meeting the person you could have been. Well, in that vein, <laughs> um, I, I think you're incredibly successful. And I know that you're going to, you know, the sky's the limit for you. But if you could go back, um, back to the early days of Blake swinging the hammer, we've, we've yeah. talked about that in, in full extent. So anybody listening, I would encourage you. Uh, Go back and listen to some of the early episodes about how you got started. Really, really cool. But if you could go back and and, and meet that person when you first got started uh, before having any of the clients or the knowledge that you had, or maybe you have the knowledge, you could take that with you. Yeah. But you're starting over. Okay. What would you do differently? And let's say you have $10,000 in your pocket. Okay. What does that look like? And and would you make 
what kind of changes, or yeah. if any, what would you do? Oh my gosh. Um, Big question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 10 grand to invest, and I've got the knowledge. You've I've got, got the happen. knowledge, but you're, you're 10 years yeah. in reverse. Uh, I wouldn't swing hammers. Okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, man. I would go bigger, faster, which is easy to say. Sure. Um, hard to execute because it feels so risky, especially if you're starting from nothing. But um, I'd probably take that, and 10 grand's not going to really get you much of anything from an investment standpoint and, and property. I'd probably take that, even if I had the knowledge I have now, in, probably into education, like into a coaching program that's specific to, I, I would niche down and then find resources and surround myself in that world. So uh, if I decided big multifamily is the way I'm going and I'm starting today. I'm not going to flip a couple houses and do it myself and then buy a $30,000 rental and then flip a couple more. Like I'm, I'm not going to do that. You would pick a lane. I'd just... pick a lane and just be the expert, man. I would do it. And, it, and let's, so let's pretend it's multifamily. Then I would find my target a hundred to 200 units in the Southeast in Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, and Atlanta or North Atlanta, you know, pick, pick some places, know every single broker, um, underwrite. I would normally kind of rule of thumb is like, if you underwrite a hundred deals, you know what you're doing. I would go in, underwrite a hundred deals. That's free to do. So that didn't cost me any money. Get, get in a, some kind of program that is teaching about buying big apartment complexes and just be the expert. And I would dive right in and I would, you know, I, I, I still, to this day, wouldn't have the funds to go buy a $15 million apartment complex. So I'm, it's no different than versus now on the finance side. I'm just raising money, right? So I'm, I'm gaining the knowledge so I can speak confidently to investors to say, you need to trust me and, and what I'm building with your funds to partner with me to take down some apartment complexes and let's go. And Do you think apartment complexes would be the direction you would go? Um, that's a good question. I, Probably because I was in the residential space. Okay. Um, as so a maybe realtor. back off on the flips or any of the the. Well, if uh, if I'm brand new, I haven't done any of that. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's a good question, I, and I I don't think there's a right answer. It's just where I I find some enjoyment and passion. Mm -hmm. Because if I picked retail shopping centers, if I pick storage retail units, space, if yeah. I pick, you're you can succeed in any one of those, and no, arguably, no one is better than the other. If you if you be, become the expert and do it, like do it well, but I think it's just what you're going to enjoy. Because if you, if you, if your passion is in self storage, but you're over here in multifamily and you're just crushing it, that's great. You're making good money, but at the end of the day, it's not it's not a unique ability. It's, it's like giving you yeah. life, right? It's yeah. like giving you energy, and you're going to burn out. And so um, I think just figuring out what that is. And so I would take not not rush into anything. To take some time to figure out what lane I want to go in through education and through talking with people in the industry picking it and just diving deep into it mm -hmm. yeah for sure cool did you feel like i mean i guess we all you know hindsight is 2020 20, looking back mm -hmm. did you feel like you know other than swinging a hammer you said you wouldn't do that anymore were there any other areas of focus that maybe weren't the best uses of your time mm -hmm. like in a big way in a business sense not just like on a day-to-day -day personal oh yeah uh, how much time do you have? Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't yeah, know if yeah. there was any like bit like one thing that stood um, out. You're like, man, I, I got into this home project in Irondale, and it was just a nightmare. And if I could go back, I would definitely never even touch that area of town again or something like that. Um, I, more so outsourcing. So okay. I was very much so, and, and I was – Yeah, we've uh, talked about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going to be in control. Yeah, yeah, I just want control. No one can do it better than me, and I, I've got to do every little piece of everything, which just stunted my growth for so long. And, and so now that I have that knowledge, if I went back early, man, I would get partners and, and, and people. Kind of release everything. the reins a little bit, yeah. maybe offers more opportunities yeah. and less. Yeah, because I was, yeah. was managing, and we've talked about it, you know, I manage that one now, um, but I, I was hands-on day-to-day, either swinging hammers or managing people on flips for five years. And, man, I, I missed so many opportunities to grow because I was on site making sure that a door was set correctly, like, that, that is so outsourceable and so yeah. easy to replace me and such a low dollar producing activity that it just took me so long to recognize that. Yeah. So I think I, my growth could have been, again, this is, you know, kind of measuring backwards and I've, I've come, I'm not discounting like what I've been able to do. And I, I recognize that and I'm grateful. Um, but also I recognize, wow, like 
if, if I can, that's one of the reasons for this podcast, if I can convey this message to someone wanting to get into real estate to, hey, I've done the mistakes and I've done it. And if you can take that knowledge and apply it and skip all, skip 10 years of, of sure. my learning curves and mistakes, man, do it and run with it. Because that's because I've made I've I've made almost all the mistakes there are. And, but there's you know. some merit to the mistakes that you make. I mean, like it's one thing, at least for me personally, I could read ten books. I could probably even sit down and have coffee with ten experts. But mm-hmm. until I actually do it myself, it's yeah. there's just a whole nother level of knowledge, at least in the way my brain works when mm-hmm. I'm hands on doing it. So. I guess all that to say, I know you said you wouldn't swing hammers, but uh, there's a lot of knowledge that I'm sure you gained yeah. through that process and being hands-on and being on the ground and yeah. fixing those doors. And uh, I think we even had uh, one of your early TikToks that took off is about talking about you were able to really speak the language with a contractor yeah. who otherwise maybe some of the other um, investors and stuff he deals with, he can just kind of talk his way out of it versus yeah. you. You're like, no, I, I know how this is done. Yeah. Uh, I've done it, you know, yeah. and, and ultimately you were able to get the problem resolved. I think a lot because you had the experience. Yeah, you know? that, that is true. So uh, you know, yeah, maybe there's I, some give and take yeah, there. Yeah, I, I don't want to discount that. But that is, I mean, just pull, pulling the trigger, like there are, there is never going to be no risk. There's no amount of knowledge from books and talking with people that you can gain that eliminates all There's going to be mistakes risk. made, all, yeah. hundred Because every deal sure. is a little different. No deal is exactly right. And so, yeah, it, there there is going to be. But I think if, like, I had a quote unquote head of construction and a system of here's how you operate call me when you're done kind of thing um i've got a here's where the financing comes from here's the deals we're looking for and we've got a if if instead that first deal instead of it being a ninety five thousand dollar house in irondale that takes me 11 months to flip myself it was a 125 unit that could cash flow day one like holy cow like where would i be today yeah if that's where i started right right and 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 made some failures on that and some learning curves and did it. But if I, if I invested that 10 grand in the knowledge on how to hedge the risk to make sure that um, it was a calculated risk and make sure that worst case, I'm not, you know, going bankroll at the time I had no money. I was living with my parents unmarried, but you know, I making sure that worst case, like my investors don't lose their money. Right. Then if, if I'm comfortable that I'm setting the deal up where worst case, they're going to be made whole and the deal's, you know, it's not the end of the world, then it's worth that risk. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would go bigger, faster. Bigger, faster. Bigger, faster. Pick a lane. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's somebody out there that needs to hear that, maybe kind of dabbling in in things that aren't the best. Kind of the theme of this episode, I guess, is is managing your time and trying to be efficient. And maybe not, maybe efficient is not even the correct word, but just like, being strategic mm-hmm. and, and, and how you're allocating your time, what you're doing, is it really maximizing my goals or the potential to reach my goals versus yeah. things that aren't really doing much of anything. I feel like I'm in control, but really it's just a waste of time. Yeah. You know, so. Well, well let's bring this full circle. And if I go to the driving range two hours a day and only hit driver over and over and over and over, but only hit driver, you know, eight times in a 18 hole course, but I chip 57 times, but I'm not working on chipping at all. Is that the highest and best use of my time? Is that being strategic on my practicing? Yeah. Right. Full, so full you got to spend a whole day just on the driving range, a whole day in the sandbox. <laughs> yeah. A whole well, day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, diversify on, on your skill set and figure out where you need to spend your time. What's the highest and best use and what's your unique ability. Right. Yeah. And just hone in and just focus on it and go. And that's, that's why I'm so pumped about this year is, like that, that program is already, we're six months in out of a three year program. I've shifted my focus and, and my mindset. So on you're how seeing I a, a good return on the investment of doing this. I think coaching. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a big investment time and money, but I think it's going to come back tenfold just based off how it's transitioned my focus yeah. into, um, you know, that, that four quadrant activity into one. Cool, man. It's always good to get an update from you. And, and yeah. um, obviously you're doing the coaching and stuff. And um, I'm sure that's being incredibly beneficial, hopefully, yeah. with oh, all the yeah. time and energy and investment and being in Chicago. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure we'll get more updates and stuff as you progress yeah. through that. And, and anyone wanting to dive into that, you know, multifamily space, I'm, I'm halfway through a book. I think it's Dave, David Lindahl. It's called The Multifamily Millionaire. And okay. it's been super good to lay out, 
like just very practical steps. Like here's here's how to get into it. So shout out that's multifamily my, millionaire. Multifamily, okay, so yep. people specifically wanting to get into the multifamily. Yeah, yeah, it's been a pretty good read so far. Awesome. Uh, well, I always like to kind of dive into the personal thing, and I know we spend a lot of time talking about golf yeah. and stuff. So it's not all business around here. It's good to kind of just hear about what you have going yeah. on in your personal life. And uh, the past few podcasts, um, for anybody that's been following, we you purchased a Land Cruiser, yeah. and you kind of told us the story about how you acquired that yeah. and, and the deal you were trying to work to make that happen, but ultimately you got it, um, and you've been uh, working on it with all this free time that you have. I don't know how you have time <laughs> to work on a vehicle, but uh, what's the latest with that, man? How's yeah. that going? Yeah, uh, man, we, so the, the big um, crescendo, how do you say that? That's, uh, well, that's, you're the piano major. Yeah, so I, I, I chose yeah. the wrong word. Uh, we got it running. That was the biggest. Like okay, we've been cool. leading up to this for for what three months now. Finally got it running. Um, now, and, I was I've been following on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, and, and, uh, was it the the fuel pump or the starter? Yes. Or what was the problem? So I replaced the fuel pump because that seemed to be the issue, and it just still wasn't getting power. What's going on? Well, <laughs> I I wired it up backwards. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then didn't fry so, it or anything? Or no. To, oh, okay. No, it still works. You still, just wire it the correct Literally, way. yeah, yeah. And it, it took um, a friend's brother coming over who is a mechanic and two two hours of troubleshooting everything. He was like, oh, well, these are just wired backwards. So you you talk about, thing, like, feeling yeah. dumb. I was like, oh, my gosh. Well, so we fixed that. Only And then it was like, I knew once we get it started, we're going to find other problems because we hadn't had the thing running yet. So the alternator's bad. So um, it's up Batteries on ramps. Just dying, yeah. Yeah, up on ramps. I'm in my driveway now, and you know, when when I find time, I gotta switch that out. So okay, got one switch out the alternator, and then hopefully there's while it sits there off. So we went to the beach last week. Brand new battery, hooked it up, put it in there. Got back from the beach, it's 100 percent dead. And so something's pulling off the battery. I don't think again, I know nothing about cars. I'm learning. Well, I'm so not much. a mechanic. Uh, much of a mechanic yeah. myself. But so. from my understanding. That's not going to be the alternator, so there's something else going on. Something draining the battery. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's a problem for future Blake. We got to figure out the alternator first. Well, uh, that's well, if at. you're not only into real estate, and you want to hear about his uh, journey into the world <laughs> of Land Cruisers, which is a, a whole world in that and of is. itself. Yeah. Uh, follow Blake on TikTok, Instagram, all the other socials. Um, it's been cool uh, to hear about what all you have going on, man, and catch yep. up, and talk about golf, and Tr- try even to though I'm not a golfer myself, but yeah, it's always great chatting with you and hanging out and until next time man take it easy cool see ya see ya